Now is the executive director for the Center for Labor and a Just Economy at Harvard, Sharon Block. Uh, Sharon, thanks so much for being with me. You know, when the UAW characterizes their talks with Ford as reasonably productive, it just reinforces that this is not one big conversation with four players. These are three individual negotiations and conversations. How does this unprecedented trio of strikes influence UAW strategy, but also the individual automakers and how they approach th these negotiations? Sure. And you're absolutely right. This is an unprecedented strategy. So we're all just speculating as to how it's going to play out. But I think as, as Sean Fain has said, one of the benefits from his perspective of the strategy is that it gives him maximum flexibility. So I'm sure he is now thinking about what the next step is. Are there, is he going to ask his members at other facilities to go out on strike? And now he can respond uh, based on how the negotiations are going with each of the companies, because you're absolutely right. These are three separate negotiations. They're obviously informed by what's happening um, with each company, but ultimately the union will sign separate contracts with each of the big three. So you think that uh, having all three at once gives the UAW an advantage that they would not have otherwise if they were striking just against Ford or just against uh, Solantis? Absolutely. They're putting pressure on, on all three companies, but they have the ability to ratchet, sort of calibrate that pressure depending on how negotiations are going. The companies can see which company is having more pressure applied, where are the negotiations going better, but it just puts a lot more variables on the table so that the companies, um, you know, don't, as Sean Fain has said, the, pres the companies don't know what's going to come next. Hmm. Um, I mentioned in the intro to Gabe, the former president, Barack Obama, uh, weighed in and said that it's time for uh, the automakers to do right by the workers. Of course, we heard from President Biden. It said that record corporate profits should mean record contracts. And let me put up one more variable here. This is the Gallup poll taken around Labor Day that shows 75 percent of the people polled uh, support or side with the workers versus 19 percent who uh, side with uh, these automakers. What is the, the value, the influence of public support on what happens inside these, these rooms? I think it's incredibly important. And again, this is something that makes this strike and this res you know getting to a resolution of this labor dispute different than i think we've seen certainly in the past couple of cycles of uaw negotiations because public support for the workers is higher than it's been in decades and what that does i think it gives some confidence to the union to those workers like you were just talking to out on the picket line, that the, the customers are going to understand and they're going to stick with them. And I think that puts a lot of pressure on the, the company's representatives at the bargaining table. This is a union for lots of reasons um, that the company should believe can sustain a strike. And so there, you know, there's going to be no easy out for the companies without, as President Obama said, coming up with a contract that's fair. I think it's really important that that came from President Obama because obviously he was president when this union made great concessions to save the auto industry in our country. And really what they're saying now, and I think this is resonating with the public, one reason why you see such high public support for this um, for the strike is that it's time for the for the union to to share in the success of these companies. They bore a really heavy burden when these companies weren't doing well. And now that the companies are taking in record profits, it's time for the companies to share those profits, share that success with these members. I introduced you uh, by reading off your current role at Harvard, but you're also a former assistant uh, secretary of policy uh, at the Department of Labor in the Obama administration. We've heard from uh, those around the White House. Uh, we spoke with Congresswoman Debbie Dingell yesterday 
that she does not see that there is a role for the administration in mediation or negotiating here. Do you see a role for this administration in trying to end this strike? I think the administration right now is doing exactly what they should be doing, which is expressing support for workers getting a fair share. I mean, it's really a central tenet of, Bi of Bidenomics to have a strong middle class. That's what the UAW has really stood for in this country for a very long time, creating middle class jobs. Um, and that's central to our economy being successful. So I think continuing to reinforce that message but this is a, a negotiation between the union and the companies. That's the system that we have. You know, it does seem to be working. A strike doesn't mean that our system doesn't work. It's a way of influencing what happens at the negotiating table. You know, as you said in your um, in the intro, there w does seem to be some progress with the negotiations at Ford. So no, I don't see um, a role for the administration to actually intervene in the ta in what's happening at the negotiating table. Sharon it's Blush. creating the right environment. Sorry. Uh, I, I apologize for interrupting there. I, I think we got it. Uh, your message there, Sharon Block. Uh, we appreciate you waking up early for us on a Sunday morning and helping us understand what's happening with these uh, three simultaneous strikes. Thanks so much.